Okay, this is chapters 11 through 15 of Lock the Doors, Amy section. Chapter 11. Are you ready? Mom asks, and I nod because we've been practicing a long time. This is different, she says. This is real. She doesn't need to point at them because I know right away. There are three children and two adults. The dad is pushing an empty cart and the mom is shouting at a girl who probably, who's probably about eight. The other girl is older and seems angry, but the boy, but it's the boy I'm focused on. He doesn't look like he's with them because he's so far behind and no one checks that he's following them, not even his sisters. When Will was alive, mom or dad would hold his hand and he would get annoyed and say, Amy, Amy, until his fingers gripped mine. This little boy has no hand to hold and he's losing sight of his family, but he doesn't cry because he must be used to it. Come on, the woman yells. She still doesn't look around, like, and it's like she's calling a dog. I remember everything mom told me. This is a test I need to pass, and then she'll be happy, so I walk toward the boy and check that no one is looking, then touch his shoulder and say, Hi! The boy stops and, lo the boy stops and looks up, but there's no smile because he doesn't trust me. I'm a stranger, and he's smart, even if his parents are arseholes. Are you bored looking around the shops? I ask, and the boy nods. Do you like toys? He nods again and almost smiles, and I hold out my hand, and he takes it. Then I walk slowly in the other direction, and he follows. I keep walking and count one, two, three, all the way to twenty, then turn round and look for his parents. They're farther away than I thought, so when I go back, I have to walk fast to catch them. The boy's legs are too short and he moans, but I ignore him because I know Mom is watching. When his parents are just a few steps ahead, I let go of his hand and, and say, Go on or you'll get lost. He runs up to his mom and she grabs him and says, Speed up. Then I go back to Mom and say, Why couldn't it be that one? I think he needs rescuing. She shakes her head. It's not time. You need to be perfect. And so does he. We used to go to swimming club on Saturdays, but now we do this. Let's go home, she says. It won't be long now. Dad never comes with us because he hates what we're doing, but he doesn't argue with Mom anymore. He pretends like this isn't happening and hopes we fail, but we won't. Twelve. We have a family meeting because there are important things to discuss. It will happen soon, Mom says, so we have to be ready. She has a list, but Dad refuses to look until she bangs on the table and says, This is important. Dad isn't Dad anymore, but then Mom isn't really Mom either. Dad used to talk all the time and his laughter filled the house and he always got home early so he could play before bed. Now he works late and only speaks when he's spoken to and never laughs. Mom pretends to be happy and we let her because it's better than hearing her cry. We used to sit around the dinner table every night, but this is the first time we've done it since Will died. I still can't say the word out loud. I can't, I can think it, but even that hurts. I miss him so much and I know it was my fault even though dad says it wasn't. He said, accidents happen, but they don't when you're careful. Mom hasn't said it's my fault since she almost did the first time, but I know what she's thinking. I can see it in how she looks at me. Sometimes I don't think she likes me very much, but I'm all she has left. I know Will was her favorite because he was younger. You become boring when you're older, and if she could choose, she would have kept him and lost me. But you don't get to choose the big things. They just happen. If I could choose, I would have stayed outside until he got tired or taken him back in even if he cried. I wouldn't have left him and I wouldn't have checked my phone. I have dreams about what I saw and I wake up scared and sometimes dad is asleep in the chair next to me and sometimes he isn't. When he's there, he whispers me back to sleep and when he's not, I try to do it myself but it's not the same. Mom is never there because she has her own dreams to worry about. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry I messed up and that some mistakes are too big to repair. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it doesn't help. I used to say it every day until mom shouted, stop apologizing. So now I only say it in my head. Dad says she doesn't mean to be angry and I know he's right, but I also know I'm the reason. I want to ask if it gets better, except I'm scared it doesn't. And I still want to say sorry because keeping it in makes me feel heavy and ready to burst. So I whisper it, and it feels better even if they don't hear. I'm sorry. 13. You don't have to do this, Dad says, but Mom says we do. She says we have no choice if we want to stay together. Amy, I 
His mouth stays open, but there are tears where the word should be. I touch his hand and he pulls it away, holding it to his face while he cries. Except it's not a cry. It's a moan and a shout and a sob all mixed into one and it's horrible. It's okay, I whisper, but he shakes his head. It's not. Mom sniffs behind us and I move closer to dad because we're not supposed to do this. She only gets upset in private and I try my best. The floor creaks and I close my eyes waiting for her to yell. But I feel the bed drop lightly, and when I look, she's sitting next to us. Mom takes Dad's hand away from his face and kisses him. Her fingers tell me to come closer, so I do, and she pulls me into a hug with Dad in the middle. He's shaking, so I grip tighter, and then I see Mom is shaking too. Her eyes are closed, but the tears are there, sticking her eyelashes together. I think the words then say them out loud. I'm sorry. This is my fault. Mom gave me the job, and I messed it up. I know, she says, and I feel lighter because she isn't telling me off or blaming me. And I think of Will and feel heavier than before. He used to sit on Dad's shoulders and laugh at the sky. I was too small to carry my brother that high, but now he's there pushing me down. I guess he weighs more now that he's gone. 14. Dad breaks more often than Mom, and it takes longer for him to mend as well. The day after Mom cries, it's like, I dreamed it. She says we need to focus on the plan, but I'm scared because even though we practice and Mom says it's the right thing, I'm worried it's wrong. There are different types of wrong, and the worst kind is about is what happened to Will, but that doesn't make this right. I don't want to, I whisper, and Mom says, what did you say? It's too hard to repeat it, so I don't. But she heard because she stares at me. You're the reason for all this. If you had been a better sister. I think she's going to cry again, but she doesn't. Her eyes go thin and she breathes out and whispers, You want to make it better, don't you? I nod because I do. If the police find out, they'll take me away and mom will go to jail and dad will live here on his own. He's fixed a hole in the fence and mom said something about horses and gates, but he shouted, I had to do something. I couldn't stare at that fucking reminder anymore. Dad swears as well now, and he doesn't care if I hear. Their arguments used to be whispers, but not anymore. Now I'm the only one who whispers, and I hope my brother can hear me, even if I'm not sure about heaven. Dad said that's where he's gone, and Mom made a face like she didn't believe it. I keep changing my mind. If he's not there, he's nowhere, and I hate thinking that. I wish we'd never played creatures. I don't like the garden, and I still go outside because it feels like he's there. If I close my eyes, I can see him running toward me, and if I concentrate, I can hear his laugh. And it feels nice until it doesn't. Remembering him makes me makes him real again, but it also hurts. I hate pretending nothing's wrong. I didn't go to school for a while, and Mom said I was ill, but now I have to be strong for the family. No one talks about Will at school because people don't care about little brothers. Before I went back, Mom said, It's not going to be easy, but you can't tell anyone what happened. Do you understand? She says that a lot now, and I always nod because it makes her happy. Before we take the boy, she says it again, and I say, yes. And what do you do if it goes wrong? I say I was playing a game, and then I say I've lost my mummy. She smiles and kisses my forehead. This will all be over soon. Fifteen. That's the one, Mom says. Don't let me down. The boy is crying, and I wonder if Mom's made a mistake, but she pushes me forward and says, do it. He's not like the children I usually follow. He seems dirty and upset and not someone I'd want in our house, but he does look a bit like Will, and Mom knows best. I turn to her, and she shakes her head and points forward. We're not supposed to be together because if one of us gets caught, we both do. But I don't want to do this anymore, so I stand still. We're not at the shopping center this time. We're on a street I haven't seen until last week when Mom drove us here and spent ages looking for cameras. Security cameras are everywhere these days, she said, but that's not totally true. It's not here where I'm standing, and it's not where we're going to, if this works. I turn around one last time and mom looks angry. So I do what I did at the beginning. I dare myself to take one step, then another, then another. And after enough dares, the boy is in front of me. Hello, I say, and he squints like he's looking into the sun but doesn't reply. Would you like to play? He turns, but his mother is nowhere and not even I can see her. Play what? The boy asks. Whatever you want. There are lots of words to remember because children can say so many different things and mom has prepared me for all of them. He looks one last time for his mom, then nods. Okay. I hold out my hand and he takes it. The park is five minutes away and the disabled bathroom is big enough for two people to change clothes at the same time, but the boy won't do it. When I show them to him, he says, I've got clothes, but these are better. 
No, he says, shaking his head too hard, but I know what to do. So I take out the sweets and his eyes go wide. When he reaches for them, I say, not until you've changed. So he does, and then he eats a whole packet of candy like it's a bag of chips. After I've changed, I stuff my other clothes in my bag, but leave his on the floor because they smell. Then say, are you ready to play now? He nods and reaches for my hand because I'm winning him over. Mom is in the car with the engine running, and she has a hat pulled over her face. When the boy sees her, he says, Who's that? That's my mom, I say. She's nice. Is your mom nice? The boy nods and gives her a funny look, but she smiles her old smile, and it reminds me of Will. I help him into the car seat and strap him in, and he asks, More sweets? Mom turns and says, Of course, gorgeous. You can have all the sweets you want.